grateful to be with everybody this morning. So, hi. If you guys want to stand, that would be awesome. Gosh, I'm excited for what God's going to do today. I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills me. Can you raise your hands like this? Just give it a little like this. 
I lived in uh, Kenya, Africa for a little while, and I'm telling you, it was so much fun because people moved. <laughs> so let's try it again. And when we sing, let's put our hands up like this. And when we dance, let's give a little dance. And when we shout, let's shout. So there's some uh, some sound going out. And then let's declare that God is good to us. Here we go. And I sing because you are good. And I dance because you are good. And I shout because you are good. You are good to me. One more time. And I sing because you are good. And I dance because you are good. And I shout because you are good, you are good to me. You're good, you're good, you're good, God. Yeah. Sometimes we just need to move to remind ourselves how good God is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good move song, let's see. Shall we try it? Ready? Here we go. And I sing because you are good. And I dance because you are good. And I shout because you are good. You are good to me. One more time. And I sing because you are good. This song is so timely because the Holy Spirit just wants to release His blessing. And in His blessing and His power are His love. Right? And to your children and their children and a thousand generations, God is not looking to be heavy handed and to make us pay for our mistakes. He's looking to love us and bless us and he wants to come alongside of us. If there's places to repent, repent quickly and then let's go on. Here we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing it again. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing amen.
Oh. Uh-huh. 
I just see the Lord just inviting us into the place of his power. There's a lot going on right now. And he's just inviting us to come in to the place of his protection, the name of Jesus, and just sit down and have a cup of coffee or hot chocolate or iced tea with him in the midst of everything that's raging outside and have his peace because of who he is as the all-powerful God. invite you to release a new place of power over each of our lives. And I pray for each of our hearts to be willing to step into that place of new power and that you would give us wisdom and discernment and your love and your care for ourselves, Lord, and for those around us, that we would lean back in the places of you and we would walk in your power. Now, Lord, I ask that you would release any of us who are struggling with fear, discouragement, anger, lust, disappointment, any place, Lord, that is not of you. Release those places over our hearts and help us to walk into the fullness of the power of Holy Spirit, of forgiveness, and of your strength, which is your grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, New Song. I am so excited to be with you this morning. My name is Carrie. I'm one of the leaders at New Song on staff, and I lead the worship and direct that um, area. And Pastor Lane asked me this morning if I would share what was on my heart with you, and so I'm really looking forward to this. Happy Independence Day weekend. I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July with your family, even though it looked a little bit different this year. I hope that you were able to connect in some way with your loved ones and those that are in your life that we get to celebrate living in this incredible country. And I'm grateful for that and just feel very blessed to be here. I'm looking forward to sharing with you about something the Lord has put on my heart this weekend. And that is that forgiveness is a choice that brings true freedom. I just wanted to share a funny story that I read about a man and his wife, and they were having a little bit of issues with each other, and so they weren't talking with each other. But the man realized that he needed his wife to get him up the next day at 5 a.m. to make a flight to Chicago. So not wanting to be the first one to break the silence, he wrote his wife a note on a piece of paper that said, please wake me up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Well, the next morning he woke up at 9 a.m. He had slept through his alarm. He had not made his flight to Chicago for business. He was (laughs) furious and he went to roll out of bed and just tell his wife, ah, what happened? And he noticed there was a note next to his pillow. It said, it's 5 a.m. Wake up. (laughs) And so often this is the story of our lives where we feel justified in holding something and so we don't offer forgiveness and we don't want to be the first person to give in and so we just kind of make that compromise like writing the note like that man did and we miss out on sometimes some really important things because... We weren't willing to forgive and we weren't willing to cross that bridge or unlock that place. And so with that, I would like to read, if you want to read along with me, I'm reading in the Passion Translation and I am going to read Luke 15, starting in verse 11. This is a story that Jesus told. It's called one of its parables 
If you've been in Christianity even a second, you've probably heard this story. And in the Passion Translation, it's called the Loving Father. And a lot of translations refer to it as the Prodigal Son. Prodigal means wasteful. So starting in verse 11. Then Jesus said, Once there was a father with two sons. The younger son came to his father and said, Father, don't you think it's time? to give me the share of your estate that belongs to me? So the father went ahead and distributed among the two sons their inheritance. Shortly afterward, the younger son packed up all his things and traveled off to see the world. He journeyed to a far-off land where he soon wasted all he was given in a binge of extravagant and reckless living. With everything spent and nothing left, he grew hungry, for there was a severe famine in that land. So he begged a farmer in that country to hire him, and the farmer hired him and sent him out to feed the pigs. The son was so famished he was willing to even eat the slop given to the pigs, because no one would feed him a thing. Humiliated, the son finally realized that he, what he was doing, and he thought, There are many workers at my father's house who have all the food they want with plenty to spare. They lack nothing. Why am I here, dying of hunger, feeding these pigs and eating their slop? I want to go back to my father's house, and I'll say to him, Father, I was wrong. I have sinned against you. I'll never be worthy to be called your son. Please, Father, just treat me like one of your employees. So the young son set off for home. From a long distance away, his father saw him coming, dressed as a beggar. And great compassion swelled up in the father's heart for his son who was returning home. So the father raced out to meet him. He swept him up in his arms, hugged him dearly, and kissed him over and over with tender love. Then the son said, Father, I was wrong. I have sinned against you. I could never deserve to be called your son. Just let me... Uh, the father interrupted and said, Son, you're home now. Turning to his servants, the father said, Quick! Bring me the best robe, my very own robe, and I will place it on his shoulders. Bring the ring, the seal of sonship, and I will put it on his finger. And bring out the best shoes you can find for my son. Let's prepare a great feast and celebrate. For this beloved son of mine was once dead, but now he's alive again. Once he was lost, but now he is found, and everyone celebrated with overflowing joy. Now... The older son was out working in the field when his brother returned, and as he approached the house, he heard the music of celebration and dancing. So he called over to one of the servants and asked, What's going on? The servant replied, It's your younger brother. He's returned home, and your father is throwing a party to celebrate his homecoming. The older son became very angry and refused to go in and celebrate. So his father came out and pleaded with him, Come, and enjoy the feast with us. The son said, Father, listen, how many years have I been working like a slave for you, performing every duty you've asked as a faithful son? And I've never once disobeyed you, but you've never thrown a party for me because of my faithfulness. Never once have you even given me a goat that I could feast on and celebrate with my friends like he's doing now. But look at this son of yours. He comes back after wasting your wealth on prostitutes and reckless living, and here you are throwing a great feast to celebrate for him. The father said, My son, you are always with me by my side. Everything I have is yours to enjoy. It's only right to celebrate like this and be overjoyed because this brother of yours was once dead and gone, but now he is alive and back with us again. He was lost but now he is found. This is an incredible story. It's one that so shows us God's heart. And I would like to share five points with you that I feel like the Holy Spirit has sort of shared with me. And they are something that just become keys to unlock values from the kingdom of heaven that God wants us to be able to walk out here on earth. So the first point I would like to make is free choice is one of the most powerful gifts God has given us humanity. Free choice is so powerful that it can make or break relationships. The youngest son used his free choice 
to ask his father for his inheritance early. This was not a normal protocol. Usually, the sons inherited their inheritance, inherited their inheritance, after their father passed away. And it goes back to Deuteronomy, where the older son got two-thirds, the younger son got a third. So that is where scripturally this takes is taken out of as far as inheritance. But the younger son didn't want to wait for his father to die. He was impatient. So he exercised his free choice to hurt his father's heart in saying, I don't have time to waste and wait on you dying. I'd like my inheritance now. That is a really big deal because free choice is such a gift that we can use it or we can abuse it. And when we abuse it, it hurts God's heart. But like the father who allowed his son to leave and didn't guilt shame him, God also gives us the ability to choose and doesn't guilt shame us when we choose to do something contrary to what his heart is for us. The second point I would like to make is when pig slop looks tasty, it's time to reevaluate where we're at. The son had gone out, he had lived recklessly and extravagantly, spent all of his inheritance, was not responsible, made very poor choices, and ended up feeding pigs. And the slop that he was feeding the pigs looked tasty. That is not a good sign. If we're in a situation where pig slop looks tasty, then we are in the wrong place. But what I would like to point out here is, even though the son thought, hmm, I'm so hungry, and the land is dried up, that this pig slop looks tasty. He did not stay there. He did not stay in the pig slop. And that is brings me to my third point, which is his dad was close in his thoughts. Even though he had done all of these reckless things, his dad was close in his thoughts. And there was a glimmer of hope that his dad would take him back as an employee, not as a son, surely not as a son, but as an employee, because this youngest son knew his father's heart toward him, even though he didn't deserve to be taken back even as an employee in his own mind. This son felt hope that maybe his father would allow him to come back as an employee. And that gave him hope that he wouldn't have to live in the pig slop. Even if he led, lived in a humiliated life and was never acknowledged by his father again as a father-son relationship, he knew his father was a good enough man that he would probably hire him back. That is such a touching place in my own heart because so many times I have felt less than for decisions I've made, even small ones that were contrary to God's heart and ended up in a place that was stinky and not a great place I wanted to be. But I felt hope knowing that I could go back to the Lord. And a lot of times I felt like even if he doesn't fully forgive me, at least it will be enough for me to still be in God's good graces. So I understand where this youngest son is coming from in this place. So he chooses to get up from the pig slop. And as he's going back to his dad, he's rehearsing his speech. I'm not worthy to be your son, but if I could be your employee, I would be fine with that. He's ready to be humiliated by his dad and shamed 
and guilt-ridden, but it's better than just sitting with the pigs, and at least maybe he could get a little of his dignity back. So he starts to make the trek back to his father's house. And then the story cuts over to the reunion, to his dad. And this is so cool to me. The dad's reception of the youngest son shows us God's heart. Because it says that his dad saw him from far away. He was looking for him. He had his eyes out. And in the Greek there, the word is he ran faster than someone in that culture for that age that was appropriate. So basically, he was undignifiedly running toward his son, not even caring if people saw him as not being the dignitary that he was because he was so excited because he had been looking for his son to come home. So the son comes up to the dad and he has a speech ready and the dad says, no, 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 and interrupts him and says, bring the robe, bring the best shoes. Let's have a feast. My son is home. My son is home. Point number four, the dad's reception shows that genuine repentance brings not only pardon, but complete restoration. <laughs> I was a pretty good kid growing up. I had a great family, awesome parents, two sisters. I'm the oldest, so I was a bit of a schemer. <laughs> and... One day, it was a Sunday afternoon, a bunch of friends came over after church from the youth group. What could happen there, huh? And we decided to do something that was crazy. <laughs> and um, it, we all went to do it, and we didn't think about it being illegal. We just thought it would be kind of funny. It wasn't harmful. It just was kind of funny in our heads. And so we all thought, oh, this is a great idea. And my mom was making lunch, so we lived on five acres. And so we went out to do this funny thing. Well, someone had called the police. <laughs> this is the only time in my life this has ever happened like this. And a police car came to where we were. And over the loudspeaker said, if you don't leave now, you'll be trespassing. And we ran so fast away from there. We were so scared. I thought I was going to be arrested. I was 15. I was terrified. They did not follow us home, which is really I'm grateful for. And I got home and I knew I was going to have to tell my mom mostly out of fear that I thought the police officers were coming to my house and they were going to tell my parents. So I wanted to be the first one to tell them. And I got back to the house a little bit ahead of my friends because I had run like crazy. And so I come into the kitchen. My mom is finishing making lunch for all of us. And I tell my mom what's happened. And she has her back turned toward me because she's facing the counter. She doesn't know that we've done this crazy stunt. And I know I am in for the worst punishment of my life. I'm grounded until I'm 47. I'm never going to see another boy again. I will never get to hang out with my friends. I will never get to do anything again. I'm just imagining all of the horrible things. And my mom starts laughing. That was unexpected. So <laughs> I asked her years later why she was laughing. And she said, Carrie, you were so terrified. When you walked into the kitchen, you were ashen. You were white. 
You were just so pale. All of the color had left your face. And I knew that any punishment that I inflicted on you couldn't do as much as the terrified look of when you came in. And I think for a lot of us, the Lord, obviously choices have consequences, but when we ask God to forgive us, he takes off the weight of sin. He takes off the burden of carrying an offense. He takes away those places. And it just, it feels so much release. And in the sense that, like in my story, I was terrified because I knew what I had done wrong. But I was even more terrified that my parents were going to be disappointed and angry and, you know, just so angry. (laughs) And that was not their response. And a lot of times we feel like because we've done something so bad that God is going to be disappointed and angry and he's going to have to work through things. But that's not his heart. His heart is when we ask for forgiveness, that he extends it freely. And the Bible tells us that our sins are as far as the east from the west, that he doesn't think of them anymore because the weight of sin was a big enough punishment, and Jesus took that punishment for us. So when we ask for forgiveness, we don't have to carry that anymore, and we can ask him for forgiveness, and he will freely give us that and not inflict more pain and more anger and more disappointment, which is so amazing to me. It's kind of like a key. So I brought this lock. It's just a normal lock. And forgiveness is a key. And um, different keys will not unlock this lock. There's only one thing that can unlock this. And that's this key. But I have to choose to use this key to unlock this lock. And we use this lock on our back gate for our pool. So if I want to get into the pool from the backyard, I'm going to use this key to get into this lock, to unlock this lock. (laughs) I don't know if you saw the dirt from being outside. Otherwise, it won't work. And forgiveness is like that. It's a key that unlocks amazing stuff in the kingdom of God. But if we choose not to use it, we literally put ourselves in a position of of judgment. And I want to read a quote from someone I highly respect. Her name is Dr. Caroline Leaf. She's been in the neuroscience field for the last 35 years studying the brain. And she's a really neat resource because she's a neuroplastician. So she studies how our brains can adapt and rewire around certain events, certain things that have happened, and can actually create new neuropathways, which the science industry thought was ridiculous in the 30s. And now they're amazed by what the brain can do. And so her books are super fascinating. Her podcast is fantastic. If you're into that kind of stuff, I would absolutely recommend it. It just makes you feel smarter listening to it. And it's very encouraging because she comes at it from a point that says, this is science. This is God's word. Look how they line up about renewing our minds and brain. But I wanted to read a quote to you from her. She says, The process of thinking and choosing is the most powerful thing in the universe after God, and it is a phenomenal gift from God to be treasured and used properly. The basic ingredients of quantum physics are paying attention, thinking and choosing, and consequence. When we choose forgiveness 
for ourselves or for people around us. And we choose forgiveness from a heart that is truly the Lord's and not something we are just saying with our mouths, but our hearts are not there. We find places of redemption, renewal, and revival. We cannot enter into a place of revival, being revived by God and seeing the miraculous if we are not operating out of a place of forgiveness. This is something that the Holy Spirit has really been talking to me about because there is a lot going on in our culture, in our world, that often causes us to feel justified in holding an offense against someone or something as far as a just a collective thing that happens or some place of leadership that is not God's heart. It could be anything from holding an offense for someone who cut us off when we were driving and almost caused a car accident. I almost had that a couple weeks ago and it was so hard for me not to be so angry And I had to come down and say, okay, the Lord protected us. We are not in a car accident. And I had my kids in the car. But we are in a position to bless that person and forgive them. So we bless that person. And I asked the Lord to help me to forgive them because I felt justified to hold an offense against that small place because they almost hurt my family. They didn't because the Lord protected us. There's a lot of times I feel like I could learn a lot from my kiddos. I have two littles, a four-year-old and a -a two-and-a-half-year-old. And sometimes, I know, this is crazy, but one of them will do something to the other one just to see their reaction and potentially make them, you know, irritated. (laughs) I think we could go full-blown angry. This happened the other day, and my two-and-a-half-year-old is very quick, and she took something from the four-year-old, and she was adamant she was not going to give it back. After some conversation and that's not okay, you know, the stuff you do when you're a parent. (laughs) She returned it and it was something that was special to our four-year-old. And it really hurt our four-year-old that our two-and-a-half-year-old had taken that. But our two-and-a-half-year-old said sorry. And with all her little heart and her sweet eyes. And she hugged her sibling. And our four-year-old said in true, true authenticity, I forgive you. And my heart was so touched because those are the places that are an example to me that God wants to do for us. That forgiveness is that accessible, even in the places that are hard or hurtful. Forgiveness unlocks the place of God being able to fully come into our lives in his power, in his magnitude of care and peace and love. Unforgiveness, offense, it's too great a weight for humanity to bear, for any human to carry. It's not for us to carry. And God knows that. And he wants us to release it to him and for us to ask him, to have the strength to forgive people that we don't like, feel justified, hate, have inflicted harm. He wants to give us the place of strength to forgive them, to forgive ourselves, so that it can be washed under the blood. I do want to say, forgiving someone does not let them off the hook. God is the one who keeps records. And he is the one, the Bible tells us, who keeps account. So it's not letting someone off the hook by forgiving them. Like the loving Heavenly Father, the Father in our story, 
the story that Jesus told us. He has every resource available. He is totally wanting us to make our own decisions and our own choices to choose him and choose forgiveness and to walk in strength of what that means, living a life of forgiveness from him, or he allows us to make the choice to walk with the weight and pressure of life that comes with unforgiveness. But in Matthew 6.15, let me read it for us here. Jesus says, if we don't forgive, God can't forgive us. That's a big place because God's heart is forgiveness. God's heart is love. God's heart is care. God's heart is for us. But just like this lock cannot be unlocked without this key, unforgiveness puts us in a position where God cannot Give us forgiveness if we have not extended it to others. I want to lead us in a prayer this morning, asking God to give us the strength to forgive and not just forgive, but to walk and operate out of a place of God's forgiveness. Because when we choose to do that, not only are we empowered in a new way by the Holy Spirit, But we are literally rewiring our brain in a way that gives God new access and us freedom and release in our lives. What an incredible place of our physical mind to match up with God's heart for the greatest thing he could give humanity, free choice. So if you would, would you pray with me this morning? Would you, first of all, if you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, as your forever friend, he loves you so much. Just like the father in the story, he's looking for you to come back, to know what it's like to be loved by a dad who cares. The Bible tells us he's a good father that he cannot have anything bad in him. There's no evil. There's no sadistic anything. He's a good father. So I want to invite you to pray with me this morning. If it's because you want to ask Jesus to come into your heart and forgive your sin, the places of wrong that you've committed in your life, and ask him to wash your life in his blood because he died on the cross and rose again and it's his blood that is so precious and we get to choose to ask him for his forgiveness so if you want to pray that with me whether it's the first time or you're rededicating your life let's pray together now father thank you that you're a good father thank you that you sent jesus your son to die on the cross and to rise again so that I could be completely forgiven. And once I'm forgiven by you, there is nothing held against me because I am a completely new person. I accept your forgiveness, Jesus. I accept your healing in my heart right now. I accept your love and your peace. I accept your lordship over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I would love to invite you to email or contact us at newsonglincoln.com. Now, if you would like to ask the Holy Spirit for a new place of operating from forgiveness, I'm going to lead us in a prayer about that. This is one of the most important places we can operate out of to walk in freedom in Christ, in freedom in our lives. 
forgiveness. So if you would pray with me, Jesus, I thank you for your forgiveness. I ask that you would forgive me for places I have held an offense, for places I have felt justified in not forgiving, whether it's someone I know or someone I don't know. I ask, Lord, that you would expose any places of lies I am believing and speak your truth to those places. We're just going to wait a minute. Lord, I accept your forgiveness. Holy Spirit, help me to operate from this place of forgiveness in you and for it to be a place I walk in daily. Renew my mind. Rewire those places in my mind. Renew my heart. Now I'm just going to pray a prayer over us and end with a blessing. Thank you so much for joining us today at New Song. We appreciate you. We pray for you. And we are so grateful to be part of the body of Christ with you. Lord, I thank you so much for every person within the sound of my voice. I pray blessing over their homes, over their families, over their marriages, over their finances, over their children and their grandchildren, over their relationships. I pray blessing over homes, over businesses, over transportation. I thank you, Lord, that you are the God of forgiveness. That is who you are. Nothing can change that. I pray, Lord, that after today, we would walk in a place of new understanding in how to operate from your forgiveness for those around us. I thank you, Jesus, that you care so much for each one of us and that all we have to do is ask you for your wisdom and you will give it to us no matter how tiny the detail. Thank you that you're a good father like the story we heard today that you told this is your heart that any time we can come back to you and you will not hold the pig slop or the bad decisions against us. Now, Lord, we love you. We thank you for who you are. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you peace. For more information about New Song, you can go to newsonglincoln.com or find us on Facebook, New Song Lincoln. Have a wonderful week.